Welcome to the L.A. Story Podcast with Stevie Wilson. Hey people, this is Stevie for the L.A. Story. And this is not my usual digs. We kind of like these. This is, this is out near Venice, and as you can see, it's a nice little loft. And you've heard Kate Rubenstein on my blog. We've done a podcast before, and now we're here to talk to her about her trip to Italy, her tremendous trip, successful trip to Italy with her jewelry, and also take a look at some of her newest pieces. So, Kate, how you doing? Good. How are you today, Stevie? Good. good. Really good. This, I'm so glad I'm here. Me too. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. I've had a chance to look at all the jewelry, all the jewelry. So you'll see lots of pieces on the blog. And so that's the good part. So let's start talking about, let's talk about the, what's on your wrist. Okay. This is a piece called mullet. Um, this is actually a unisex piece and this is made out of base metal. And it's just a long chain. It can wrap around, well it wraps around my wrist three times if I have really bony chicken wrists. So it'd wrap around probably an average person's wrist twice, or it's also kind of like a long Mr. T chain around the neck. Okay. So it's another convertible piece. Um, and it's actually, as I said, completely unisex. I'm making one of these custom right now for a guy, and I also know a lot of women who wear it. Mm -hmm. you can, it's one of those pieces I like to wear a lot because you can throw it on with everything. And I like that. Thanks. Yeah, it'd be, it's really interesting. Hmm. Brass, maybe next time. Brass, yes. You keep telling me this. Brass. Okay. Brass. I, I don't. No, no, don't ask me why. I just keep saying. I keep <laughs> thinking that. Somebody I hear likes things in brass. Well, it's just got color, but it's not too red. It's not too gray. It's just what it is. It is I don't what know. it is. Okay. So, <laughs> let's take a look at the other pieces that you have. That these did pretty well in Italy, right? They did phenomenally well in Italy. Yeah, I, I can say that. I was really, 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 really shocked and amazed and surprised in all the best way. So very, very fortunate. This is a piece, this is badass. You know the badass already. This yes. is badass new, as it's called. Um, this is a whole new chain where I just kind of went for something a little bit lighter and a little bit subtler than the serious heavy metal chain we'll go in for a zoom on that this. I'd done initially. So it's the smaller of the badass clasps with the toggle and the skull and crossbones through the mouth. And as I said, a little bit of a lighter chain. This is more like a dog chain than it was just like a, a biker aggressive chain. This is also unisex. Okay. And what I like about this piece is again, this wraps many times around the wrist or around the neck. And this is a really subtle piece where if you want, you can just sort of turn the clasp in the back. If you know, I actually had an attorney in Italy buy this and she was saying she loved that she could just sort of look like she had a very subtle, pretty chain on the front and then have the skull in the back and go into meetings and think like, yeah. <laughs> I absolutely love that. If you yeah, that's great. It, it was such a, yeah, it sounded much better when she said it. So this is kind of one of the thrills of this new lighter chain, I think. Yes. So we'll see what happens with that. Cool. This piece is called, oops, um, it's called Grace. No, just kidding. This is called Lava. <laughs> um, and this was actually just featured in a Scandinavian fashion site. And this was something I made after a trip to Iceland. A if you can see the the that it is lava. I actually have a picture on the blog for this. Incredibly detailed. Yeah, you can see all the different holes. Um, this is just cage wrapped in sterling silver with sort of a teardrop shaped chain. Love the chain. The chain is, it's pretty tough looking, I think. It fun. actually is such a contrast to the lava. Yeah, yeah, I kind of thought so too. I like the way the black and the silver sort of pop together. So that's kind of a fun piece. It definitely gets a lot of attention. You sort of, you feel it when you put it on. Mm -hmm. It's a strong, bold thing to wear. I love it. Thank you. Love it. This is called Whiskey. Um, and of course, Moonshine Designs is the name of the line. Mm -hmm. So this is just made with all the joy of Tennessee whiskey. And I guess other people make whiskey too, but I'm just giving you a little shout out to Tennessee. This is actually called Whiskey Quartz. Okay. And a lot of people confuse it with Smoky Quartz. It's not the same. Smoky Quartz, as you were saying earlier, is a little bit grayer. Yes. Um, sort of like gray, brownish, whereas this is more, it's got yellow and... Caramel. Caramel, yeah. It's got a lot of lightness to it. So these are really, really beautiful. You can see, great hopefully quality. you can see that when you look at this as the close up, because this is the, the large drop and it's really gorgeous. And I'll have pictures of this on the web. 
on the blog because I took pictures of it because I just had to. <laughs> it's, it's one of those, ooh, got to take a picture of this. It's a very attention-getting piece. Yes. Um, and it's got kind of an Art Deco-y feel, I think. These are very faceted, old kind of, a, um, of appealing gems. And I actually wore this to a party at Claridge's during London Fashion Week a couple nice. months ago, and it fit Claridge's. And I feel like that just makes me happy in a way that a lot of things don't fit there. Yes. But this was the right thing to wear for that party, so. You know, and I actually had somebody write me from it. It's been featured on what I wore also, and somebody wrote me from that and said they wanted to wear it with a white t-shirt and jeans, so. Why not? Why not, yeah. So I definitely see, I, you know, however you can wear it is, it's there for you. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So it's got yeah. a lot of different things to it. This piece is one of my personal favorites. Very, very Yeah, I think very it's one subtle. of my personal favorites too. This um, is Labradorite. Labradorite is very understated, and this is actually a very, quite a lovely piece of Labradorite where if you can just tell, it's not, some Labradorite is just pure gray. This is actually grayish, blackish, greenish. Yeah, and people, um, you can barely see that here, but I took another picture of it um, that the picture will be on the blog, which hopefully it will show up because there's a distinct green, blue-green cast to it. It's there beautiful. Is. And when the sunlight hits it, you really see the green and the blue. It's almost like an underwater sea creature kind of feeling, where you just throw a shell underneath yeah. the sand, where, yeah, you don't expect to see all the colors that's in it. Uh, Labrador doesn't get a lot of attention in the gemstone world. I don't know why. I think it's honestly a really lovely stone. Yes, yeah, it's, it's really um, underrated. It's very underrated, yeah, and understated as well. Yes, <laughs> and that's a cool, cool part. So I'm here to speak for it. Um, this is just with 14 karat gold. And then it has um, just a very simple table clasp. So it's beautiful. See thank that? You. And so it's very delicate. So very if somebody yes. wanted, you wanted to make a nice, get a nice gift for somebody or yourself, and you want it just very, very simple, that's the nice clean piece to get. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Uh, this piece is called I-40, and it is actually named after I-40, the highway that runs, okay. um, which happens to run between Tennessee and almost to California if anyone was curious. And this is white coral, which is almost never used in jewelry at all. Yeah, I can um, tell. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Well, it's interesting because it's very textured. If you look closely, it's not shiny at all. It's just sort of a dull matte textury quality. And normally what they do with white coral is grind it up and use it for medicinal powders. So, oh, interesting. <laughs> I'm not really sure why, but I thought it was pretty enough to be made a necklace out of. And then it just has a very simple sterling silver clasp and a piece of red branch coral just to punctuate it. Um, this is another piece that was very popular at exhibition in Italy, okay. um, which I was very happy to see. So I felt, when I made this, I wasn't really sure if anyone but me would like it. Um, honestly, I feel that way about all myself. So I'm always very pleasantly surprised when people do, but this, people just kept reaching for it and picking it up. And we're very surprised that this was white coral and not pearl. Interesting. Um, yeah, so it's definitely Except got- Except pearls aren't that white. Pearls are not that way. That's exactly right. Okay, well now we've got earrings. These are very cool. Okay, so these are called Eat the Rich. Uh, I was feeling a little bit, um, I was listening to the Smiths and feeling a little bit punk when I made these. So these are actually white gold, um, or Oro Bianca, as it's called in Italy and black spinel. Nice. Thank you. Um, these are just tiny, tiny little drops of black spinel all clustered on together. And the thing that I really like about these is they're ear threads, so you put them in and they dangle, this part dangles from behind the lobe, and this is the front. These feel a little bit tough and a little mm -hmm. bit funky, but they're also very delicate and very elegant and they can uh -huh. be worn anywhere. So I sort of feel like it's just sort of one of those moods you might have. You can't really express your right. mind. These are the earrings for that. Right. Um, and where do you see the picture for, that I shot with these on bamboo? Which looked amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I've there been was here in style my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> you honestly, never. It's, to uh, sometimes that, so. it's like um, I'm really good at styling other people, but it's like sometimes styling myself is harder. And I sit there and go, Do I do this or that? And then if you saw the outfit that I wore yesterday, then you have no question about what I was doing. <laughs> so. Okay. I wish I'd seen that. So. It's on Facebook. Brilliant idea. Oh, okay. I'll check it out. It's my profile There's, picture. Oh, okay, okay. That'll, it's, it was really something. Okay, I wasn't on Facebook yesterday, like the one day I missed the great outfit. <laughs> <laughs> What's still there? Okay. So, and we've got a really cool yellow piece that I love. This piece is called Sunburn. And love it. And actually, well, you know, it's just sort of was for that moment. Look where at this. It this feels, is lemon drop colored. This is actually yellow opal. Really? Yep. 
no. Yeah, yellow opal is pretty hard to find, um, but I was lucky enough to find some. And I love that these are just really, really glass-like, very, very smooth. I mean, if you feel it, it just feel really good on. Um, jelly bean sort of yellow opals. Love with it. With a strong sterling silver top of class. And this is another piece that can be worn once around the neck as a necklace or a couple times as a bracelet. Love it. And it's very classical, I think. Um, very elegant and also very strong. And as I said, it's called sunburn. Just for that moment when you're lying out at the beach, as you know, we're lucky enough to be here in Southern California. And just for that great feeling at the end of the day where you feel so good from having been in the sun right before it just starts hurting. <laughs> yeah, but even to wear it with a bathing suit. Exactly. Yeah, or with could. with a t-shirt. Well, actually the thing about opals, one of the things about opals, which are fascinating gems, is first of all, they've been around since prehistoric days. Mm -hmm. So most opals date back to the Pleistocene era, which if you're remotely as nerdy as I am, and I hope you're not, is fascinating. Um, but also opals are 85% water. Probably. Oh, really? Uh-huh. And so they need to be worn and they need to be as close to the skin as possible, as frequently as possible, so that your body oils keep them from drying out. So there are so many interesting facts. I didn't them. know that. I didn't know that until I started doing this. When yeah. I was a kid, I used to have a black opal ring and it was, it just didn't look right in a ring. I could see I mean, it was, it was beautiful, but it was like, I felt like it just didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. It should not have been in a ring. Well, there you go. Because it was, it was already embedded within hmm. There was no contact with human flesh. That's probably what it was. It was stranded. Yeah. yeah. They definitely, they are sort of, they're supposed to be worn as much as possible. So if you have opals, wear them all the time. Definitely wear them. Okay. The and don't worry about them being bad luck if you're not born in October. Yeah. No, I don't even think about birth stones at all. I just like the stones for whatever they are. Yeah. They're awesome. And we talked about this a little bit last time too. I mean, there are some people who really very strongly believe that every stone that you're drawn to, you need the mythical powers and properties and attributes of that stone in your life at that moment. And that's the reason that you're drawn to it. So I would never necessarily say that, but there are a lot of theories out there. Um, that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> okay. Then that means I'm drawn to a whole lot of different kinds of jewelry and I must be, should be wearing a lot. All of it. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. As I do. I don't know. As, as the credit card it. gets bullet holes in it. Well, you know, you're only here once, right? I can sure. That's true. Dress yeah, I just well. hope I just hope that when I hope I am able to buy a whole lot of things before I go. I have no doubt that you will be. <laughs> <laughs> Put a lot of bullet holes in that credit card and then just let you know, oh she's dead. Bye, I can't. Fake your death and move to Mexico. Yeah, really. It's a good idea. Say that. <laughs> Not that that's my plan. But... <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm I'm laughing because it's so funny. So that's why the um, frame just showed people. So this is Stevie. We'd like to thank Kate Rubenstein for her time. You need to go visit Moonshined. That's with an ED at the end of Shine. You know, Moonshined Designs. Moonshined with, Online. Moonshineonline.com. Dot com. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. And this is. I mean, it's really. An incredible go through the whole site because there's a lot there it just because it says earrings it doesn't mean it's just that one group that you're seeing keep going for the pages because there's a lot of stuff and there's a lot of stuff that I saw downstairs that's not even up here mm -hmm. so this is Stevie thanking Kate for her time and this is see you soon thanks for joining Stevie Wilson on LA story feel free to check out other podcasts and videos bookmark it now www.la-story.com